Hey, welcome folks. This is going to be round four. I'm going to go ahead and do a review real quick or try to do a review real quick. I've scrolled down so you don't see the names of the people on the teams. That's for their own benefits. They aren't giving me permission to do this. I'm just doing it on my own. So you don't deserve to see it. Um, this is round four results. I'm on the Andrews team and Chester has so far up to this point has been our, our biggest um, competitor. But if you take a look at the numbers this time, uh, they really got snockered. Like, look right here at their emergency loan. They got $15 million in emergency loan. Uh, we really kicked butt this round. And there's there's a big reason for that, uh, is that we had an emergency loan last time, actually, uh, $6.5 million. And the main, main reason for that was we had plenty of inventory left over. Because we had plenty of inventory left over, we didn't have to produce as much this round. And uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what effect that had. Now also look at the contribution margin. We're at 44.8% compared to Chester's 40.3, which is our next competitor. That means we're able to sell our parts uh, for a higher price with less cost. Or in actual fact, we can sell our products for lower cost and uh, still make a higher profit. And that is essentially what happened in this round. And that's how we took back market share and actually surpassed everybody now. So here we got our profits at 9.7 million, Baldwin at 2.6, Chester at 5.1, and Digby at 5.4. They were still able to sell stuff even though they had an emergency loan. So now the cumulative profit, we're at 32 million. So we're basically one round ahead. Uh, Chester is at 26, not too far behind is Digby. And then Baldwin is behind them, basically a whole another round's worth of profit. So we'll see what happens. Uh, they can definitely come back. It wouldn't be that hard, honestly, because they have a lot of inventory sitting around, which means they don't have to work as hard this time. It's already built for them. All right, so the two teams, the two computer teams, are the ones that are going downward. Uh, they're down at the bottom. Then we have Baldwin. Uh, they have a chance to come back up, as long as they don't overproduce again. Digby's making it a straight line. They're taking a very conservative approach, which is working very well for them. Chester was doing neck and neck with us last time, and then they took a nosedive with their emergency loan this time. It really hurt them. <clears throat> and then we were very conservative with ours this time and really schnockered everyone. So that's basically where we should have been last time, somewhere around here, and then from there up higher, but it didn't work that way. So let's take a look and see why. Digby's got an A credit rating. Yeah, they deserve it. They, they're very conservative with what they're doing. All right, so for net income, we really, like I said, we really kicked our butts. We almost doubled the net income. Um, here's the inventory costs right here. So they're in the hole. Accounts payable, very good. We made 18 million from ours. They actually made, they lost 14 million from their operations. That's because they were too busy building products. As far as the plant improvements, ours so far is still the most improved with Chester right behind, so they are our closest nemesis. Uh, Digby's not too far behind them, you know, at just 10 million bucks. Now they sold common stock last time, that's gonna make their stock price go down because that means more stock is available. We borrowed a lot, 14 million. Uh, everybody else borrowed a little bit less than us. I actually borrowed um, a short-term loan because I wanted to take care of this right here, the 6.5 million. Uh, had we not done that, then this would have been more like three million or, or four uh, four million in the net changing cash cash position. We'd have had less money, so we had to pay back our emergency loan last time. They had to pay back their short term loan last time. That wasn't an emergency loan, and so now at the end of this year, we have 5.4 million dollars on hand, and these guys have zero. Digby's got eight, so they got plenty of money to play with this round, which is very good for them. Accounts payable. We didn't build a whole lot of products. We didn't have to pay a whole lot. That's probably why our numbers are low, and they, they built a whole bunch. So they're buying their stuff. <laughs> Common stock. We bought some of ours uh, early on, and everybody else has sold stock. So we're kind of beating them out in that regard, which is why our stock price is much higher than theirs. Here's our sales. All right, net profit 9.7 million. Now this is a revelation right here. This is overlooked uh, probably pretty often. So here we have our capacity. Here we have our production. The closer we can get our capacity and our production neck and neck, 
the better off we probably are because it will lower our labor cost as we charge overtime as you can see down here in the bottom of the screen i've got 63 percent overtime or second shift which means these people are working more than they typically would if they wanted to just come in at seven in the morning and leave at 3 30. because we're working them more it costs us more in labor costs so we're trying to bump up our capacity to make it so that our capacity and our units sold are about equivalent. So you're gonna see us increase that. But look at Chester. This is a lesson I just recently learned. So this is what we were doing in all rounds past. But let's take a look at, at their labor cost. So for their cake product, <coughs> they're at 7.72, $7.72 for each one. They're charging all three dollars more in labor and a lot of that some of that has to do with their working at 179 percent of their plant utilization we're at 162 but here's the other part of it is there at 6.5 automation we're at 8.0 automation we've put a lot more money into it than them but that's how you're going to see those numbers come down now they were equal across the board on their plant utilization it seems like that's what they were using as their forecasting method and that's why they really screwed up here and it's something our professor actually did not point out to them. But if you look at this, these numbers shouldn't always be the same. So that's a fluke. That means they obviously were looking at these numbers and using that uh, based on their balance scorecard to determine that that's how many parts they needed to sell. That's not a good way to, to determine it. All right, so as far as capacity, we have almost the highest. Digby's got the most. They're not even running 100%. And they shouldn't because they're they, they're not really um, competing yet in the low tech market. They they have their uh, size and their performance too high, uh, too high in performance and too low on the uh, on the size to compete in the low tech market. Their prices are right at the top of the low tech market at 35 bucks. They probably won't change it because they don't seem like the competitive type. They might. This round, I can almost guarantee that Cake and Baker will drop their prices because they saw us drop ours. And let's see, our contribution margin is at 52%, which is amazing. And it so far is the highest one that's on here, which means we are making the cheapest product. Even though we're selling it for less, we're still able to eke more profit out of it. That will change this next round just because now uh, we'll have to produce more. We won't have as much leftover inventory to rely on. So here's the uh, market share here, or the accessibility, excuse me. So accessibility so far, our product is the most accessible, which is probably why they're predicting that we will have the most market share this next round. This price between 15 bucks and 35 bucks, that's 41% of the importance. So the lower you make your price, the more in demand your product will be. Age three years, that's about where our product's gonna be this year. And then MTBS, the higher it is, up to closer to the 20,000, the more the 21% you get, and then as close to the position you get, you get the 9%. So this last round, we had the 29, we had the 21, we had the nine. So that's 59%, just in about 59% of what they wanted. See, this says we got 47. So we were right about there. <coughs> but look at how much they wanted our product versus everybody else. And if you notice on the side, Crazy is the only one that had a higher rating that was low on the list. Otherwise, it goes straight in order. So you really have to pay attention to price. That's something they're interested in. The MTBFs, look, Days has a high MTBFs, but their price is too high. And their performance and their size does not match the center of the target. So based on all this, where people were not even trying to hit this target, we actually probably could have sold another 100 Maybe maybe 150, but 100 for sure, I think. See, these guys stocked out. They're also too high, uh, too high in performance, too small on size. And they're charging more than the 35 bucks. So they stocked out partly because they were in the high-tech market. They're not even pushing sales. They should have. Some You may wonder, why did we only do 1400 Well, if you watch me make my decisions in my other video, my previous video, you'll see that once you hit 100%, you only need 1400 to keep it, or 1.4 million to keep it at 100%. In order to get the accessibility up, I have to overdo it. So I'm putting in the 3 million until I get that up to 100%, and then I'm also going to do the same thing. Maintain it at whatever it takes to maintain it. And that's what's going to give us the higher 
score. We're at three right now as far as the year. So we're going to leave it alone this time. Uh, or we're going to have it so it adjusts later in the year. Okay, because we're right in the sweet spot. Probably just going to leave it alone. Yeah, matter of fact, when we look at that, is there anybody else even close? Yeah, Cake is going to have theirs really close. Theirs is going to be in the sweet spot in about three months. Their prices is, is good, so they're probably going to lower that down. And their age, they're going to let it age this year, so I bet they're not even going to touch it this year, which is good for me uh, when I do our, our choices. This is Chester, the main competitor. If they drop their price and they raise their budgets, they actually could compete with us this round. Days won't because they're too high. Eat, it's computer. Baker, theirs is, their performance is too low now, and their size is is too small. So they need to bump up their performance, and they need to, and their size basically needs to stay put, uh, and they need to increase their MTBFs in order to be competitive in this next round. But that's why you see us at 24 and 20, because we're actually sticking to what the customer wants. Now, in the high-tech market, the most important thing in the high-tech market is the ideal position. That's a lot different than the low-tech. Their most important thing is price. So you have to pay attention to what they want most. So what they want most is position. All right, so let's take a look at down here. Position. Amoeba was in the best position. Fast was also in an excellent position. Feast was behind it. Champ was in an excellent position. Uh, best was in an excellent position, and Annoy was, I know it was right on the mark. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, five out of the top six products were right on the leading edge. Feast was not. Okay, so that was the number one most important thing here. The ideal age is zero, then it's price, then the MTBS. All right, so as far as age is concerned, look at the age of all these products. Here's the youngest one's best and annoy. They came in top. Um, but their awareness and accessibility start off low because they're brand new. But that's also why they're rated highly. Yeah, the price was up toward the top. Their MTBS were high. Um, but Amoeba won them out. Why? Because, well, it was they're more aware. They have more accessibility. Their age is still very low. The MTBS are high. The price is low compared to the rest of them, and it also ended on the leading edge or very close to the leading edge. So that's what happened there. Able down at the bottom because it's a low-tech product. It doesn't belong in the high-tech product. Um, but they went ahead and were able to sell 153. It's just it's well known. See, it's got the 100%. So that's why it's going to sell those. Can't really do anything about it. So the market share. They're assuming. Let's go take it to the high-tech. So the low tech, it said that we were going to have an increase, potential increase. This Chester's going to have a potential increase, which means we're going to be stealing it from Ferris, which is interesting because they're the high tech kings, and Baldwin. So Baldwin's got to correct some of the stuff that they've been doing. They really have a chance to come out on top this next time as far as profit goes because they have so much product left over from last time. But here's the industry demand. Uh, so there's be 10% more here and 20% more here next time. Notice that the high de high uh, tech product is slowly building up to where the low tech is. That's going to happen naturally. Compound interest. All right. So last time, last round, uh, Chester had outdone my team, uh, Andrews, as far as market share. We have since come back. In the low tech, we've got 26.3. Chester's at 24.1. This time in the high-tech market, we, we took them over. We are at 25.9. They're at 20.9. Last time, I believe they were at like 23 or change. Oh, this is the potential. Excuse me. So let's go over here. The actual market share. We were at 23.8 this time. They were at 22.7. They had beat us last time on there. And then we were at 24.7 in the high-tech. And last time, same thing. They had beat us in the high-tech. So we've taken it over. There's no one in the 20%. Oh, no. There's Feast. They're at 22%. But we've taken market share in both the high-tech and low-tech products. Now, we're not that far ahead to claim victory because Chester's right behind us on low-tech. Uh, Ferris is right behind us on high-tech. <coughs> uh, but I don't think it'll be that hard to, to kind of hold on to here as long as we make good decisions. So it's very interesting. Yeah. 
There we go. Here's the perceptual map. So right now, Crunch and Big Ben, I would highly recommend either Crunch take a move toward the leading edge or they go and bump down to the low tech. Same thing for Big Ben. Don't just ride the fence. Bump into one of the markets because right now you're not doing yourself any favors. I know that's what I did during the practice rounds, but it's really not working for you. All right, let's go ahead and take a look down here. The, oh, sorry. Here you go. So this is when people revised. It's interesting to see this. So I know what they did. They just adjusted their MTBS. That's all they did. <coughs> Sorry about my cough, guys. It's almost gone. We just adjusted our MTBS, which is why I know what they did. Um, let's see. Anything that is past March, they made some changes to. So champ, that's a high tech, so they didn't have to do a whole lot there. There's not a whole lot of high uh, automation. It takes more time for automation to uh, make adjustments. So it's interesting to see when these came out. Let's take a look here. We saved a whole lot of money here too. We get our productivity 114, 114. Let's see, we only had 290 people needed and we only hired 278 so i pointed this pointed this out in other videos uh, these teams that are playing against me i have not been making these videos available to them the same moment that i make them but if you look across the board who is hiring fewer people than they need andrews we have 12 people fewer than we need why because i'm making adjustments on my hr Baldwin is not, Chester is not, Digby's not, and Erie's not. And they don't understand why. And the reason why you do make a difference is instead of having this turnover rate at 6.3, I have it at 7.0, which is the balance scorecard. That, uh, that's what they desire. I lost 101 employees this last round. And that was mainly because I didn't need them. I didn't produce as many products. It's going to come back to bite me this round because I'm going to hire more as I produce more. And that's okay. We did still hire 19. Naturally, you're going to have no fewer than 5% turnover rate. That's what's built into the game, so you can't change that. Productivity, um, we want to keep that high. That cuts down on our costs as well. But see these training training hours. Uh, I believe 80% is the most uh, efficient one, and $5 million is the most efficient as far as recruiting spend, or $5,000 per employee, I suppose. So we're spending 116 thousand on recruiting they're spending 841,000 so they're they're in a spending 1.7 million on recruiting while we spend 1 million on ours and a lot of that is this right here separation cost and that's because we got rid of a lot of people that's okay tqm this is the round when tqm started um in these rounds you want to do full on 750 the first two rounds and then the third round i believe it's only 250 is what you do and that's the most efficient way to do it. I'm most interested uh, in this ethics summary that's coming up. I know that's going to come up in, in rounds coming soon. So that'll be interesting to uh, to see there. But that's it. That's that's the review for this uh, for this today. Um, I would if you have any questions down below, go ahead and or go ahead and comment down below if you have any questions. If you like this, if this helped you out, give me a thumbs up. And you're more than welcome to subscribe to this channel. Once my uh, semester is over, I won't be producing any more videos like these, but I have several of these that I can do for a full round, uh, rounds one through eight. And then I will try to put up rounds for my competition. Uh, I did the first round, and so far I'm at, at the top. It put me at the 100% percentile, but I think that's because I'm the first one done. So cheerio, folks.